Hey, Weather Warriors. In this video, I'm going to give you your snowfall, temperature, storm track, precipitation forecast for winter 2020, 2021. This is my official forecast. And I'm also going to be unveiling what this map means here for your area later on in the video. Each of these areas could have key personalities that the winter pattern takes on in your area this winter. But before we begin, I invite you to subscribe below if you like detailed forecasts just like this. And we have a little contest. How much snow will Madison, Wisconsin see this winter? Comment below. We'll get a little fun contest going. But you can see this cool water starting to build and it's also moving just a little bit to the west. So that's something that I factored into the forecast. The IRI and CPC is forecasting. This is December, January, February eh, through about April. And you can see La Nina forecasted through that time period, about a 1.5, which is uh, about a moderate. So let's just get right into my forecast here. We're going to look at the storm track first. This is how I think the general uh, jet stream is going to look this winter. Now, it's not always going to look like this. The weather patterns are always changing. But if you were to take these maps and you were to average them from December, uh, from December through March 1st, so December 1st through March 1st, this is how they would look if you were to average them. I think you're going to have an active jet kind of, you know, go through this area of the country with your uh, most dominant areas of storms and precipitations occurring here in the Ohio Valley and maybe north parts of the Midwestern region, and also out here in the Northwestern United States through maybe even the Northern United States, uh, where you're gonna have more divergence within that jet stream. Very fast storm systems this year, especially in the central and Eastern United States, particularly the central US, I think fast storm systems and also the Northwestern United States where that Pacific jet is occurring. Here's our temperature outlook. I'm thinking uh, warmer than average temperatures here for the east two-thirds of the United States, south third of the United States. Okay, slightly warmer than average, one or two degrees. So nothing crazy. However, this is the next outline. And, and this outline is going to be about two to three degrees above average. And this is going to occur in the southern plains out to the southeastern United States. Now, you might think there's a lot of warm temperatures here in the Ohio Valley in the northeastern United States. Does that mean there's going to be no snow? Well, I'll go over that in a second. There could be more snow in some areas. We'll go over that in a second. That's the uh, temperature outlook. And then we got uh, one more area here. I think the warmest area is going to be in the southern United States from Texas to Mississippi. Temperatures three or four degrees above average possible in that area. Maybe a little bit more in South Central Texas, where I think the warmest activity is going to be. The cooler temperatures are going to reside in the northern United States, the extreme north, you know, about northwest one-fifth of the United States, from the Dakotas, Minnesota, out to Washington, where, uh, you know, temperatures could uh, be about one or two degrees below average. And then the core of the cold will be within uh, the Montana, northern Idaho region, where you could get temperatures around two to three, two to four degrees below average. Again, nothing crazy in terms of cold, but that will be where the coldest air uh, occurs this winter, according to my forecast. Now, precipitation, we're gonna look at our precipitation. I'm forecasting below average precipitation for most of the southern fifth of the United States, particularly in the southwestern United States and the extreme southeastern United States as well. Again, this doesn't necessarily mean less snow. We'll go over that in a second. Obviously, most of these areas aren't going to get snow anyway. Now, I'm forecasting even more so below average precipitation here from uh, southwest California, southeast California, down to southwest Texas. Again, that extreme southeast portion of the United States. Now, above average precipitation, I'm forecasting you know, slightly above average here, about 25% above average in the Ohio Valley and then the northwestern United States. And again, this below average is going to be about negative 25%, and then that orange is about negative 50% below average. So you take 50% of your average precipitation and uh, subtract it, essentially. And then uh, the green, light green, 25% above average. The dark greens here, I just added, these are going to be about 50% above average. So take 50% of your annual precip and add that on. So I think you're going to have a, a core of above average precipitation here in Illinois, out into Indiana, maybe as far east as Ohio, and then also the northwestern United States from Washington, Oregon, and Idaho, and maybe extreme west Montana. So that's where the active precipitation is going to be, and you can kind of see where that jet kind of uh, goes through the United States, 
These areas in gray are equal chances, so it could go either way, essentially. But I think your core jet is going to divert the precipitation in the interior northeast, out into the Ohio Valley and upper Midwest in the northwestern United States this year. And again, the active areas of divergence are going to be in the northwestern United States and uh, in the Ohio Valley. I think that's where your best storm potential will be this year. The big question mark will be the northern plains. I don't know if there's going to be as much strong storm activity out there. Now, our snowfall forecast, obviously, uh, these areas are not going to get snow because it's too warm. But just for simplicity's sakes, I'm going to say a below average for anywhere you do get snow in the southern United States, by about 25% below average. So if you get 10 inches, you take 25% off. And then obviously much below average in the southeastern, southern parts of the United States. Again, most of those areas don't get snow anyway. And then you look at above average precipitation. I'm forecasting the brunt of the above average precipitation to be here in the northern United States from really the northern, I would say, one third of the United States with the question mark again being in the central plains where I don't think the storms are going to be quite as powerful this year but you will get some good temperature swings there and so we're going to keep that area in equal chances now you'll notice even some areas here in the northeastern United States and Ohio Valley they were above average temperatures in my forecast however because of the above average precipitation I think you're going to have a net gain in some of these areas where you do get a little bit more snow than average 25% or so above average for the extreme far interior northeast, more towards Canada and into the Midwest, North, Northern Midwest region, and maybe northern parts of the Ohio Valley, and then the northwestern United States as well. Now, I think the core of these snow is going to be, again, northwestern United States here, where that overlap of colder than average temperatures and above average precipitation fall. So Montana, all the way out to Seattle area, you know, Washington, Oregon, and Idaho with equal chances farther south along that jet stream. So now's the time to uh, go over the big map here. This is going to kind of go into more detail on how the winter is going to evolve for your location. Let's get right into it here. The uh, first area we're gonna look at is the Southwestern United States where I'm forecasting dry and da uh, docile for most of the winter. This is how the personality of the winter is going to occur for Southwestern United States from California to New, Me New Mexico, where I think it's going to be mostly dry and uh, not terribly warm. So I don't think you're going to see terribly above average temperatures, you know, average to maybe slightly above, but mostly dry in that area. As we go out to Texas, this area is what I want to call the Desert Dome. And this is where the overlap of dry and warm temperatures are going to occur. And I think that pattern will hold much of the winter. I think the cold blasts will be off to the north. The temperature swings will be farther to the north. That polar vortex might not be strong enough. And those Arctic outbreaks might not be strong enough to deliver these plunges down in the central or the southern United States. So I think it's going to be uh, consistently warm down there. And then also the southeastern United States, frequent warmth within this area. We could have a cool start to the beginning of no uh, December here, so I think it's going to be cool early on, but I think it'll transition upwards, you know, via MJO and some other processes in the Pacific Ocean that will probably keep it mostly warm. Now, not terribly warm, but uh, moderately warm in the southeastern United States through much of the winter. Wet and brisk here in the northwestern United States. Not terribly cold, but cooler than average and wetter than average, which will deliver a lot of rain and snow in the upper elevations. As you go towards the northwest United States, this is where this year's jackpot's going to be. So I have a jackpot every year. This is going to be, I think, the worst of winter this year. You know, it. I often like to put it out in the Ohio Valley, but and a lot of people do. But this year, we're putting it out here in the northwest United States where the overlap of the coldest temperatures and the most snow is going to occur. And that's Montana, Idaho, and Washington, parts of we uh, eastern Washington. Fresh powder here in the northern parts of the United States, really the northern half of the Rockies, you're going to have average to above average snowfall, slightly above average, not incredibly above average, but I think you're going to have a lot of fresh powder in that area. It'd be, it'd be you know, a, it, it maybe a slightly above average snow skiing season for that area. 
As we go towards the north central United States, this is where I think the most clippers are going to occur. And there's going to be above average clippers this year, according to my forecast, with the La Nina. Typically with the La Nina, you get these faster storm systems that ride across the United States. So I think you're going to get a lot of small snows up in the northern United States. Again, average to maybe slightly above average snowfall, probably towards average. But again, a lot of small little systems that add up. Same thing for the central United States here in Nebraska, Iowa, and the D southern Dakotas into Kansas. But I think this area is going to have more temperature swings. Um, again, nothing crazy, but I do think that polar vortex could break off maybe once or twice this winter with the La Nina. Overall, that QBO is going to keep it in check, I think, most of the winter. But I do think you're going to have some temperature swings within this area where that jet's kind of riding up and down through that region right there. So that would be the most temperature swings. And then also... Uh, as you head towards the northern Midwest, Michigan and uh, Wisconsin, I think you're going to see snowy conditions out there more so than average. Uh, yeah, temperatures are going to be mild, but I do think because of that above average precipitation that you're going to see a lot of wet snow out in that region. The warrior zone this year, this is kind of the winter battle zone that a lot of people call. We're calling it the warrior zone. This is going to occur from East Kansas all the way out to northern Tennessee into the far extreme east or the west part of the interior northeast really into the Ohio Valley it, you know it typically occurs in this area a lot because of that jet stream it, it, it's kind of where it's located and that's where you typically get ice storms and uh, systems like that sometimes it's farther to the south so that's why you see that there a lot but I think it's going to be a little bit farther to the northwest this year due to the warmer pattern and this this type of La Nina which I think will be slightly farther to the west and north than usual and then some other factors but this is where you're going to get your temperature swings you're going to get competition between rain and snow ice and stuff like that but i do think it's going to average on at least the northern half of that warrior zone western half slightly above average winter activity with a lot of precipitation so storm systems it'll be much above average here but uh, the snowfall, that's the question, because I think you're going to have warmer than average temperatures. But I do think it averages slightly above average due to the number of storms that could ride through that area. Again, a lot of them are going to be fast paced moving. But early and late in the winter, I do think that you're going to see a nice storm or two right up into the Ohio Valley and the northeastern United States. Now, speaking of the northeastern United States, we're going to go over that area. This is what I think... This is going to be in the northeastern United States. I'm forecasting an active start to the winter and an active wind end to the winter with mild conditions in between. So it's just going to be mild, slightly above average temperatures, average precipitation to slightly below average precipitation through much of the winter. But the start and the end will have cooler than average temperatures and above average precipitation with a shot at a nor'easter or two. Again, mostly at the beginning or the end month of the winter. So as you head towards later into February and early in mid-December, that's going to be your best bet out there. So that's what that looks like, folks. Now, I do have a detailed winter forecast where I go in, into depth on how I put this forecast together. Check that out up there. If I haven't uploaded it yet, check out this video, 10-year radar time-lapse. Subscribe below if you like videos like this. Comment below how much snow will Madison, Wisconsin see this winter. And I uh, hope you guys have a great day. Share this with a friend, and we'll see you soon.